director at Midnight in Here. Um, so today, uh, this talk is the Onion Report from the Tor Project. Tor not being the science fiction publisher, but the um, the Onion Router. So those of you who are here for the science fiction talk, you're at the wrong con. Um, uh, so this is the state of the state of Tor. Tor is wonderful because it is one of the very few. Um, technologies that we have for protecting metadata, but it is fragile and complicated and has some great interesting technical issues in it. Um, and this is the, the, the Onion Report on the State of Tor. So we have um, three speakers in this session. Uh, ASN, who I am told also will answer to George, um, David Goulet, and Neva, uh, Nima Fatemi, um, who will be um, giving us the Onion Report. But first, um, Aaron Clark, um, also with the Tor Project, has a quick announcement of another event that will be happening after this talk. So. Oops. All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Aaron Clark. I am a long-term Tor person. For five years, I developed the Tor browser, and now I work at First Look as a security engineer, primarily working with the Snowden Archive. Um, but I am here today to announce that a statement that I did not memorize in advance, which is that um, I care a lot about this community. And as many of you know, it's experienced quite a large upheaval recently, a lot of turmoil. Um, and our executive director, Sherry Steele, made an announcement about it on the blog. And so you can read the details there. Um, but at this panel, we are discussing they will be discussing basically all of the exciting technical stuff that's happening in Tor. Um, we don't think that this is the appropriate place for Q&A about recent events. However, we, have, we are dedicated to trying to um, you know, further unearth and surface and you know, try to find some reconciliation about all of these problems that we've been having. So um, at 5 p.m. in the Budapest room on the sixth floor, we are holding an event for people who want to come and talk um, basically about everything that's been going on, not, not in a salacious gossip way, but rather what permitted these events to occur, what permitted them to be surfaced, and, and how can we fix this going forward. And so it will be a moderated talk. I'm one of the moderators. Um, Matt Blaze is going to be one of the moderators in the second hours. Also Dave Goulet and Biela Coleman, who's a new member of the Board of Directors. And so that's at 5 p.m. Budapest, sixth floor. Um, we hope to see you there. Thank you. And now, my beloved developers. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we had a quite an interesting, uh, wait, seven months since 2015. Uh, but so we're going to report on everything that's been happening. Happen, happen. You know, that is fun and useful to know. Uh, so we'll start, uh, of course, Tor Project. So this is a common slide. I'm guessing everyone is uh, um, comfortable or no Tor, but you know, this slide is useful. So we're an online privacy anonymity. We are free and open source. Uh, it's an open network, which means uh, anyone can run and want a, a relay and join the network and participate and provide bandwidth. Um, we have a huge, uh, we have a slide going to show that, but we have a, a very diverse community of researchers, developers, users, real operators, bridge operators, uh, grad students, and so on and so forth. It's uh, pretty huge. So we're going to show, show that to you. Uh, of course, nonprofit organization in the US, uh, 501, C3, whatever that means. All right. The new HQ in Seattle. So one thing that was very exciting uh, happened this year. Uh, we were in Boston before, and now we are in Seattle. So we, yes, we had an office in Boston. Uh, I believe it was in Cambridge, something like that. And now it's in uh, some Seattle. We have nice pictures with some hearts and going on. It's pretty neat. Um, we have also uh, an onion space in Berlin. Uh, so this is a place where anyone, if you're in Berlin, anyone can uh, go, enjoy, talk to either tour developers, tour operators, people of the community, people like you, and just enjoy <coughs> this, this place. Uh, yes, I'm going to go right, go, sorry. All right, crowdfunding. So, of course, one of the things that uh, we are working really hard is uh, to get funding uh, that, are, that is, you know, uh, diversifying your funding. So. 
uh, one of the things we did in 2015, it was a huge success, is a crowdfunding thing. So uh, we got more than $300,000 from 5,000 different uh, individual uh, donators. Donors, sorry. And um, we're going to do a new one soon. And it's working really well. That was like, you know, kind of a tryout, kind of tester things. And uh, it's fine. So we're going to have a new platform. Uh, and this is very important because the next uh, bullet point there is government funding, which is a, year, a, a problem for us. Right now, we rely heavily on a government funding, especially US government funding. Uh, it helps us do our work. We, I think we do great work, uh, we, as you're going to see uh, today. But it also influences, unfortunately, our priorities. Just to be clear, it influences our priorities. It doesn't mean we are doing bad thing in Tor. We don't do, it's all open source. We don't do backdoors. No, never, never. Uh, so other stuff also happened. Um, Mozilla gave us a grant. We're going to talk a bit about this. DuckDuckGo and RFF and so on and so forth. Also Reddit last year gave us some money. So uh, it, it's, it's going well. But again, this government funding, we need to try to diversify <coughs> this. Um, so an announcement happened like a week and a half ago. We have a new board of directors. So the entire board uh, resigned. <laughs> and we now have six new great members right now. Uh, Gabriella Coleman, Matt Blaze, Cindy Cohen, Sean Cohen, uh, Linus Nordberg, uh, uh, of course, Bruce Nair, and Megan Price. Uh, so this is our, currently our new board. Um, they started, I think, yeah, a week and a half ago, two weeks. Uh, so we expect uh, it's going to be quite epic, and uh, maybe a new board member might uh, come in after a while. Uh, so now, a bit uh, a word about the ecosystem of Tor. Uh, as you know, this is a pretty big thing. So, uh, first of all, we have core members, and by core members, we basically mean people that get money out of it. So, board members don't get paid, but employees and contractors they do get paid. So, we have around eight uh, employees, twelve contractors. So, it's a thing of uh, twenty people that you know get money to make Tor better. So, it's pretty nice uh, that we are able to actually pay people to do great stuff. I mean, Tor is great. There's so many challenges, and uh, really, really proud about this. Now, this other layer, uh, and yes, it's going to go like an onion. Uh, <laughs> we, we have uh, so many volunteers, and the 40 volunteers right there, I just want to um, make a small, uh, quick, quick point. Those are people that are on RC, that are on, pu that are on our public mailing list, on our internal mailing list, and they just do work for Tor on their own time, and they do amazing amount of work. And this is great. This is people like you in this room and people around the world that, do the, that, that just... Uh, we couldn't make it happen, Tor couldn't happen uh, without those people because those 20 people that get paid, it's absolutely not enough. Uh, one of the fun statistics is 160 unique contributors in Little T Tor, and we call Little T Tor, which is the Tor demon, the Tor thing that you, you run on your computer. Uh, so, which is pretty huge. This is a, a big thing. Huge amount of R&D, of course, grad students, 20 more professors. And this is why Tor actually thrives uh, in the anonymity, and we are really good at it. We think we're really good at it. It's because we have a lot of researchers around the world in different universities. And finally, of course, most important thing, we, this can't happen without relay operators. 7,000 relay operators right now, 3,000 bridge operators. We have, have some more details of what a bridge is. Seven, 50, 50 more projects, different projects about, uh, related to Tor and 2 million users. So it's pretty great, it's pretty huge, and it's people like you that does make it happen. Uh, so George, it's going to about, about the network. So apart from the ecosystem of uh, humans that was just presented, Tor is a network of computers through which you're bound to become anonymous. So those thousands of computers that are run by volunteers around the world is uh, an extremely crucial part of Tor. Um, so in this graph, you can see the number of relays. Relays are the, the computers of Tor through which your traffic bounces, basically. Uh, you can see it through the years. You can see that, like, 2012, we had 2,000 relays. And now we have, uh, we have gone up to, like, 7,000 relays. This is uh, definitely a growing community. And, uh, it's a, it's a pretty intense community building project because uh, to build all these, all these volunteers and uh, for them to be so dedicated, it's, uh, it, uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to, 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 um, to, to bring Tor out there. And um, the next slide, which is even more important than the number of computers themselves, is uh, how much traffic the Tor network can actually push. And uh, you can see that here the increase is even more. So like, 
2012, the Tor network could push in total 20 gigabit, which is some traffic for sure. Uh, but now, uh, we, we, we basically, the, the Tor network has capacity of 200 gigabit, which is uh, 10, 10 times improved. And uh, it's, uh, it's a much more mature network, let's say. The, the purple line is uh, an estimate of, of how much the traffic is used. You can see it's uh, 75 gigabit used, but um, we're never sure if this statistic is exactly accurate. Um, so, although even though I, I told you that it's uh, actually like a, a growing community, it's, uh, it's extremely important to, to, for it to become more diverse. That is, currently these 7,000 computers are mostly situated in uh, Europe and uh, the US, the Western world, and uh, whereas that it, it is definitely great, but uh, we should try to, 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 to centralize less and actually get uh, relays running all around the world, even in places with uh, like uh, not Five Eyes uh, countries or in more, uh, in countries that have different, uh, different, um, I don't know, uh, more diverse, like, um, I don't know, Russia, Asia, it's uh, South America. Um, for example, like OVH, the provider, the VPS provider has like, I don't know, a big percentage of the network and people keep on like building relays there, whereas they should try to explore other hosting providers. There are some pages in our wiki called good and bad ISPs where people have tried to like, they have documented their experience with different ISPs and how they handle Tor. And uh, it's nice that people experiment with this and it would be nice to get more feedback and uh, an input on which ISPs are friendly to Tor basically. Um, and now we move uh, to the next subject. Sure. So um, while Tor is awesome and everyone loves it, uh, of course, I'm not biased, um, not everyone has the luxury to connect to the Tor network. A lot of people, millions of users um, are being blocked um, from the network. Here is um, in a study that we can do on the metrics website that um, if you just look at the metrics, you can see there is a significant drop in the uh, number of direct connections to the Tor network in UIE. Um, around April of 2016, I'm not a social um, scientist, so I leave it to them to realize what was happening there. But um, what's interesting is that you can see, like, at the very same time, there is a significant increase of the number of bridge users. So um, there are two, like, usually there are two ways uh, for, you know, uh, places to block connections to Tor network. Type one is to basically, they, uh, they just, block access to Tor website and you cannot uh, download Tor browser so you can access anything over Tor. Uh, which for this thing, we have a service called GetTor and uh, you can send an email to, or, or an uh, IM over XMPP Jabber to GetTor at torproject.org and it basically sends you um, links to mirrors of whatever you want, like uh, OS X, Linux, uh, Windows, whatever. And, uh, or you can DM, uh, send a DM to uh, this uh, Twitter account and it basically just sends you all the mirror links. The other type is that when they try to uh, block the connection to the Tor network. Um, this usually happens when like, they, uh, they have like, uh, they do DPI um, like Iran and China and, or they do like uh, block the whole list of relays because the list of relays is being published um, and it's um, accessible by anyone. They can just basically block all the um, IPs and ports, and uh, there are like other various ways ways that they uh, they block connection to our network. So for that uh, thing, we have pluggable transports, which basically uh, they obfuscate uh, the traffic and the encrypted traffic, and they make it look like uh, garbage traffic, but it actually is encrypted traffic to Tor network, and uh, it also takes advantage of various different uh, protocols, um, like, I don't know, WebRTC is one of the things that uh, people are working on, and, uh, or front domaining that like, it looks like you're uh, connecting to some um, major CDN, but you're actually connecting to Tor network. Um, and it, like, what's, what's, like, the other thing that I like about pluggable transports is that it's basically independent from Tor the software. So you can um, have these pluggable transports and um, attach them on VPN or on any other tools that you have that you can basically obfuscate the traffic to, the, to your VPN. So if, for example, you are in Iran or China or, and, and 
uh, VPN connections are being blocked, you can basically uh, use polygonal transports to connect to uh, your VPN server. Um, you can find uh, a lot more information on, uh, on this address. Uh, we have a wiki page of all the communities that are basically working on this. It's much, much broader than Tor. Um, there are various other organizations and groups uh, working on this, especially those who are active in circumvention, uh, circumvention technologies. And uh, we would love to, you know, uh, for you to join us, give us uh, more ideas, uh, other transports that we can use, and, and other ways that we can bypass censorship. All right. So one other thing that happened uh, in last year uh, is that we tried to organize a bit more Thor projects. So there's so many people, so many volunteers. So we created some different themes. Themes. So uh, we're going to uh, present uh, the five different themes that exist. Uh, so the network development team is basically, yeah, the malocasters of the network, no, Tor network, which is basically working on everything that touches the network. So any bytes that goes in basically the Tor daemon, the, the core Tor, and some pluggable transport as well. Uh, so one of the great things coming up is uh, uh, better crypto. Yes, we won that. So we have an ED25519 and SHA3. And this is actually implemented. So right now you're using Tor. Uh, every link between relays, between clients, is uh, using way better cryptography than RSA124 used to be. Um, this is another big thing. So this is why we have these uh, nice images, because it's a huge engineering effort for us. Uh, and uh, so it's a complex construction of different things. We have a talk tomorrow at, at noon uh, on the other room there that is going to be only about this uh, amazing, great new thing, the next generation onion service. Just to be clear, onion service uh, used to be called hidden services. So hidden services, onion service, same thing. Uh, the pluggable transports, so uh, Nima uh, told us a bit about pluggable transports. This is a thing that network team is working uh, quite a bit. We have uh, full grants to do new ones. One of the, the major main pluggable transport is called Ops4, Ops4. Uh, and it's uh, being used, it's, it's a great one. I'm not sure if it's being blocked in China yet, maybe not. They're pretty good at blocking. Uh, but we're coming up with a new one which is going to be called Basket2. I don't remember why the two is there, but it's called Basket2, and apparently it's super great, and this guy called Yawning, this toy developer, it's amazing, and does a crazy, crazy pluggable transport <coughs> stuff. Uh, uh, I think this is their last one for network. So another thing has been very important is DDoS uh, defense. Uh, one of the thing uh, the Tor relies on is called directory authorities. So basically, uh, I'm going to go fast on this. Is nine trusted computers around the world. I think it's eight now, sorry. Eight uh, 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 trusted computer around the world. They create a consensus. Every relays, every client, take the consensus. The consensus is a, a, a view of the network, where you can connect, where you can go. And those get attacked sometimes. Uh, not only those, but relays or even hidden services. So in this case, we implemented this fallback directory authority. So if you're going to, in Iran, for instance, and they block all Dark Treaty's IP because those IPs are hard-coded in the code, uh, well, you can't get the consensus. So we have this list now, which is a fallback thing, where every client is going to connect to one of the fallbacks and get the consensus. And when you get a consensus, at least now you can create a Tor circuit and get to the, to the Dark Treaty. Uh, it's a bit technical, but it's something we worked quite a bit on it. Application team. Okay, so the network team that you just saw is basically the team which uh, builds the software that powers the network. It's uh, the relays, the clients, all of them run this thing. However, application team is the team that uh, prepares software that our users run. So you, as the users, when you download Tor, you are faced with uh, the, Tor browser, the Tor browser. It's basically this thing you see on the right side, which is uh, a fork of, of Firefox, specially modified to provide uh, better security and privacy. Uh, it basically uses Tor by default. You can see the onion there on the top left corner. It's uh, the indicator. And uh, basically, anything you, you, you visit through this browser, it goes over Tor and you're anonymous. This is the solution we have for our users so that uh, everyone can basically use it and you don't need to make your own fi Firefox and like configure SOX proxies and shit like that. Um, so this is the Tor browser. Um, it's, a, it's, it's basically the main effort of the application team. It, it requires lots of work to, to fork Firefox, believe me. 
and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a few things about what is uh, currently being uh, being researched uh, and uh, and and done. Uh, the application team is quite busy with porting Tor browser to the to the mobile so that. Um, we have a, a, a unified experience between the, the desktop and the, and the mobile. Um, uh, they're also working on uh, like advanced security features like uh, self-rando. They did a blog post recently about uh, this. It's basically a binary protection uh, feature like ASLR but a bit smarter and it basically tries to randomize memory so that you cannot build exploits so easily. There is a blog post about this uh, in, uh, in blog.project.org. You should uh, go and read it. Um, there is also uh, work being done on the sandboxing and uh, like research on the sandbox of Firefox and whether it can be used for a Tor browser and uh, all that stuff. And they actually also have a, uh, a big team of, uh, of usability researchers that uh, actually look at Tor browser and, uh, and they do UX studies with uh, people and stuff and they, they provide to the application team feedback on how Tor browser can be improved. And uh, through the next uh, months, I think uh, you will see lots of this uh, input being incorporated in, in Tor browser. Uh, but that's not the only thing that the application team does. Uh, oh, nice logo. Um, and uh, for example, we have uh, two, two other software like Tor, Tor Birdie, which is uh, a fork of Thunderbird. And it's basically an email client that uses uh, uh, Tor by default. And uh, you, you, you should run it. It's on the website. You can find it, download it, double click, and it should, uh, it should work for you. Um, and Tor Messenger, which is basically um, a chat application through which you can do XMPP and uh, other, other protocols like uh, and, uh, OTR and stuff like that over Tor by default. Um, you should uh, go to the website and uh, check them out. Mm, okay. So um, another initiative that we started at Tor is that um, we've always been worried about UX but like um, not very orga organizational and, and um, also doing UX in uh, free and open source software is really difficult. So um, we have a lot of challenges, uh, unique challenges at Tor, and uh, one of them is that we basically make a software that makes it very difficult, um, and the, its goal is basically very, uh, to, to make it very difficult for anyone to understand what you're doing online and how you're doing it. So we cannot like, uh, collect any measures, uh, measurements and, and metrics to see how users are using it to uh, see what, what are the failure points and whatnot. So it makes it very difficult and uh, very interesting uh, challenge. But we are, still, we are working on it and we are um, doing this by collaborating with um, a lot of usability, uh, secure, uh, usable security uh, uh, researchers um, around, around the world basically in different um, universities and uh, open source designers and whatnot and uh, we are uh, they are running like basically uh, a bunch of user studies as George mentioned and um, we are also working on um, an, a style guideline for Tor um, and, and how you basically use the uh, Tor logo and whatnot and this slide um, that is having like some, some uh, theme and everything is like one of the outcome of that. So a lot of things are happening um, on that front but uh, we are still looking for more UX people um, you expert, experts from, from um, other, you know, like if you have any um, experience and knowledge in, in this area, please join us and let us know. Um, everything we do is open uh, and public. Um, so one of the, one of the uh, a couple of very um, nice things that we did uh, with collaboration with Tor Browser team is the new uh, changes in Tor Browser. One of them is the security slider. If you can, uh, if you go to your uh, Tor browser, click on the Onion uh, logo, and click on Privacy and Security setting, you can uh, have this slider that basically you set your security level. If you're paranoid, you put it on high, and like most of the things don't work. But also, um, you're far less uh, vulnerable than other other people. It basically limits the uh, the, the attack surface. And then there is this nice uh, Tor circuit info that basically shows uh, where, what, is your, what path you are taking on Tor network. Um, the other thing that uh, I'm very excited about is the community team. Um, they have been working on various um, important documents uh, such as social contract and membership guideline 
etc. And uh, also, like this team is is part of the team that do, does the outreach for Tor um, to teach other people about like what are the what are the what are the things that we are working on and what are the values of anonymity and online privacy and whatnot. And uh, a big part of it is Library Freedom Project, which I'm also honored to be part of. Um, we go to different libraries across the country and outside the country and teach them about uh, online privacy, how they can uh, protect themselves uh, using um, encryption from surveillance or any other uh, threats online. And one of the things we do, we run uh, Tor exit nodes in different libraries. And I don't know if you have, you might have heard that like DHS tried to, uh, like we, we ran it in, in one of the libraries, DHS tried to shut it down. We eventually, the library eventually won the uh, fight and then they put it back online. So it like, it created a little bit of fuzz. Um, oh. Um, yeah, and the other thing is like, uh, they are working on, on um, pursuing different ways to support the uh, Tor users and community. Oh, you might have noticed that thing. Um, so one of the important thing that uh, I think Tor community is trying to do is to uh, reach out to people who run websites and, and uh, services to let them know that if they are accidentally blocking Tor users by using some CDNs, I'm not naming names. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you run uh, a website and you're using one of those CDNs, please uh, make sure that you unblock Tor users because they are unfortunately blocking Tor users by default. Uh, measurements. All right, last team, uh, measurements team. So they have a very difficult job because a anonymity network where by design we don't know what's going on, uh, it's kind of difficult to measure or understand anything. So um, one of the things that happened this year is that Mozilla granted uh, this great amount of money uh, to the metric team. And this is great because for a, one of the first time in the history of Tor, we have someone plus another person working full time on uh, metrics. And if you don't know metrics, uh, all the graph we, see, we saw uh, are, come from this great site, metrics.torproject.org. Uh, so there is not much fancy stuff we can show you because this money is being used right now to revamp the whole system, how you co we collect data, uh, uh, how we store it, how we analyze it, and so on and so forth. Um, this is very important uh, because those statistics allows us to understand, improve uh, the network. One of the graphs they created recently uh, is this new one. Uh, maybe it's not that exciting, but for us it's extremely, it's extremely great. Uh, those are probable transport per country. Uh, so here you can see in Iran which user is, us is using what. Uh, since we don't know because plugable transport don't say, oh yeah, George is connecting to me, so I'm going to report it to metrics. We don't do that. It's, uh, it's met uh, safe metrics, of course. So this is why there's like a range uh, in those, uh, those lines because we estimate the amount, uh, the number of users that are using Opsprosky 4, Opsprosky 3, or Meek. And this Meek thing is uh, not a great thing, but we're not going to this. Um, and then Uni. Okay, so another project of Tor is Uni, the Open Observatory of Network Interference. It's basically, in uh, common words, it's uh, a censorship detection, which you can basically run from your network, and it will conduct some tests, and then it will send back to the UNI headquarters, like uh, a report of uh, the test and uh, whether there was censorship or not. Um, they've been, uh, the UNI project has been doing this for years, and uh, they have currently collected 12 million measurements and uh, from all around the world, basically, in various tests, like, HTTP, DNS, they have tests on whether Tor is blocked, they have tests on whether the bridges is blocked. Um, and uh, it's uh, still a very actively developed project. You can check the website and everything. Their current approach is that they give Raspberry Pis to people and they take them to, to, the, to their exotic countries. They plug them onto the wall in an Ethernet and then uh, this thing sends uh, reports back to, to Uni on whether the, 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 the network was uh, disturbed in some way. And then this is graphed afterwards and analyzed by the uni people. Um, so now, 
We're going to, uh, the, 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 the ecosystem of Tor has uh, many, many side projects and people that work on uh, 300 things at the same time and they have like 50 side projects and stuff like that. So there are many, many things going on. We're going to show you just a few projects that we consider worthwhile and interesting at the current stage, let's say. Um, first of all, Orbot is, uh, is basically our solution, f our current solution for, for Tor on Android. So if you have a mobile phone, you're probably using Orbot to connect to the internet. Orbot is like Tor, and then you have o or Orfox, which is like Tor browser, but for Android. And uh, they've been doing lots of great work. They've been uh, doing work on how to improve the Tor protocol in uh, unstable networks like mobile. They've been doing lots of experiments. For example, Nathan from the Guardian project l l recently posted like um, a way to use uh, um, uh, your mobile phone and uh, to, to do Internet of Things over hidden services, which is definitely a very interesting uh, use case of, uh, of, of hidden services. And uh, it's, a, it's a very worthwhile project in general. Um, okay, then we have AMIA. AMIA is basically a search engine for, for, hidden, for Onion services. Um, the, the way I look at this is that basically you have uh, Onion services that have been attracting so much uh, bad press because, uh, I don't know, people set up their sketchy websites and then people are like, oh my God, look at this sketchy website and it generates news, uh, news buzz and then journalists just hang on it and they're like, ah, okay, it's the dark web and the onion services is like the worst thing ever and stuff. But in my opinion, like there are so many social positive use cases of onion services that never get up to the surface because you just don't know where to find it. Like it can enable blogs, forums, all these things that you, most people of us don't know where to find in onion services just because we have not dug deep enough into it. And uh, this uh, AMIA search engine basically tries to collect a list of, of hidden services and index them. And uh, then you can just type, I don't know, Iranian blog on AMIA and it will give you uh, the, the, the blogs it has in its database. It's still very early in, uh, in development, so it does not work as nicely as I just said. But, uh, in, gen <laughs> <laughs> but in general, it's, uh, it's a very worthy cause and uh, we, we should uh, really work on, uh, on, 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 uh, on bubbling the good content of hidden services to the surface instead of keeping it uh, hidden uh, in, the, in, the, in the dark web. Um, so, so, okay, the last um, recent interesting project is uh, the Tor Relay Awards, which is basically a website that, uh, that uh, crawls uh, the Tor network and collects a list of relays and then it assigns them badges and achievements and uh, like ranks and stuff based on what was their uptime, how long they've been uh, out there, um, if they are situated in an exotic location with not many other relays, if they have lots of bandwidth. So you can see that like Onyx there is the champion right now. So it has all these badges. For example, that red badge that says 1% is like you have more than 1% exit probability and it gives you some points for this. And uh, in general, it's a, it's a very fun way to gamify the whole uh, set up relays uh, thing and uh, I mean uh, I can see it being used in uh, various like contests and uh, and other ways to 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 to, mo to 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 motivate people to run relays and help the network um, it's uh, www.relayawards.com and um, yeah ah and uh, the talk is done <laughs> <laughs> That was a good show of something. Uh, people, please use the mic for any questions you might have. Oh, hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the amazing work you do. Uh, you guys are incredible. But my question, yeah, I mean, that's definitely deserves a round of applause. Um, my question is something that you mentioned in one of the very first slides about diversity, and I know that it's difficult to get a diverse set of relays, but how do you feel about kind of the diversity in anonymity networks and censorship resistant networks? Do you feel like Tor is a potentially dangerous monoculture where it's the only good one that everyone uses, or do you feel like it's important that there be other alternatives, for instance, if the Tor project vanished tomorrow, 
would there still be robust alternatives that people could turn to, like I2P or Freenet and things like that? Is that also, do you guys think about that sort of diversity as well? Want to go? Um, so, yes. Uh, one of the very important thing uh, about any project, any research, is diversity in terms of multiple people uh, working on it, finding different solutions or uh, adjusting solution and basically shifting paradigms in, in all this science. Uh, so Tor is, uh, anonymity comes from the fact that we, there's a lot of users. You can't be anonymous alone. So uh, uh, in this case, uh, something like I2P or Freenet or GNUnet and so on and so forth, uh, it is very useful it's there because it's imp it, it increase and improve the um, state of the art in anonymity. And then we can exchange, we can collaborate, and uh, we can either we can also link the two networks together. So yes, it is a good idea. It's a it's a really good thing. We think about it, but unfortunately, we don't collaborate much with any other uh, uh, network. Lack of time, lack of motivation. Sometimes I don't know, uh, but it's it's absolutely very important that a lot of people do it. Yeah, can I add something to that? So um, the, the, the thing that I love about Tor is that a lot of people, uh, a lot of researchers outside Tor are, are working on it. And, and I, I don't think there is any other uh, technology that is getting that much attention in the research community. Maybe that would be a good question for them to, to put like, some work on, on the other stuff. And the other thing uh, that I love about it is that it's not a centralized system, so it cannot vanish tomorrow. Like if, if Tor project vanishes, you can like we can just get together and run a new Tor network. Uh, it, it's like it's not dependent on the organization. It's dependent on the people who are running the network. And there is like about ten thousand people, people who are, you know, participating in this thing. So I don't think that it's going to vanish anyway. Thank you. Um, I have a slightly technical question. When you resize the Tor browser window, it gives you a uh, there's a possible fingerprinting attack based on the size of the window. Um, but my question is, with Orbot, because you have so many different types of Android devices, isn't that another avenue for fingerprinting? And why wouldn't you draw similar warnings, or e does that warning even matter? Um, and I'm wondering that for Orbot users, this is not a good thing. I, I, so, for example, I don't tell people to run Android or Orbot on Android because I think this is an avenue to de-anonymize people. Or maybe I'm just misunderstanding the point of that warning. I see. Um, you mean as a linkability fingerprint, the size yeah. of the screen of the, of, the, of the mobile phone? Yes. I don't think it's directly de-anonymizing, but I can see what but you mean. fingerprinting, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually don't know what is Orbot doing in this regard. I don't know if you can spoof it in other ways. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I think you Do you guys know? Uh, no. Yeah, unfortunately, none of us are actually Android developers, so uh, you should probably ask Guardian Project. But um, what I know is that uh, Guardian Project is very closely working with the Tor browser team to uh, to like to like get all the like um, everything that they've learned um, during developing Tor browser to actually put it in a in a Tor browser for Android. So Orbot right now is just a Tor uh, is is not like it's just it's just a Tor daemon. It's not uh, it's not the Tor browser. So they are working on on a browser that would be the Tor browser for Android, but it's yet to come. Cool. Thanks. Hi, I'm John Draper, uh, Captain Crunch. Uh, I'll be downstairs in the hardware area in the mezzanine selling Inana boxes. Uh, these are Tor routers, and uh, some of the money uh, that the people at the Nana box have been uh, give going to the Tor community as well. I was the one that spearheaded that when I was in Berlin at the uh, Tor Developer Conference. So I'll be downstairs autographing Inana boxes after 6 p.m. in the hardware area. So come down there and see me. Great question. Great question. <laughs> Hi, I have a question on the same topic. Um, like, especially since Kickstarter and um, uh, crowdfunding th became a thing, there seems to be a lot of like, um, like every week there's a new box promise. Uh, seems to be like a plug and play router that you can use to route all your traffic over uh, Tor. And the majority of them don't even like release their source code, or and are probably highly insecure. Um, what do you think uh, Tor's uh, responsibility as a project is? Um, is to, when it comes to like educating consumers about those types of products. I mean, the question is, are there any products like that that you actually do endorse? Um, and then also your thoughts on the Freedom Box project. Uh, so 
uh, I, not to my knowledge, I don't know, I don't think we have any project that we endorse in terms of uh, hardware at a run store because uh, there's a, there's big, there's a lot of issues with those kind of boxes that comes out because uh, just using Tor, just relaying all the traffic on Tor is actually not enough uh, in many ways. So all those magic boxes that promise anonymity uh, are, can be dangerous, it can be good also, uh, but in, in most cases, to my knowledge, we get an email from the project saying like, hey guys, we did that, can you read this blog post and then can you endorse us? And uh, it takes quite a bit of resources to actually uh, analyze, see what's, what it's, this thing is going on and so on and so forth. So if we, got, if we get money, if we get grants, if we get resources to, to be able to do this kind of work with hardware, it would be extremely go good, I think, and we could get some boxes that are get endorsed by Tor, really well done, made research and so on and so forth, but we unfortunately don't have this, this, uh, this money right now. Yeah, and uh, I think like everybody loves uh, the idea of having this like little box uh, like on a Raspberry Pi or something that like you just uh, run a Tor on it and then you know like um, over Ethernet and then give Torify Wi-Fi to all your devices and whatever. But um, like just just like uh, David mentioned, there is a lot of issues like like linkability and everything, and it's 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 much more than that. It's they um, it it has to be a lot of like it it needs like some dedicated resources too to think about those things. Especially the security of the boxes, I, I'm not like very uh, much confident about the, especially the kernel issues of these boxes, yeah. Thanks. Hi, uh, thank you again for the tour project. It's awesome. Uh, I wanna know how you find uh, new projects to work with or do they find you or how, how do you do that? can try to answer. Uh, so over the years, the uh, Tor project is 10, 11 years, something like that, 12 maybe. Um, we, um, we have a huge amount of tickets uh, on our tracker that are features and enhancement. And when you think about this thing all day uh, for years, you get some ideas of what, is, what should be better. And also one of the most important thing is that the academic, uh, uh, academy uh, uh, blah, blah, communities uh, or helping us quite a bit on understanding what are the issues and identifying possible solutions and so on and so forth. Now in terms of projects, uh, like we saw Amya uh, or uh, whatever, Ricochet, Pond, Onion Share, and so on and so forth, those are people in this room like you, not us, not Tor developers, that think about those things, that use those, those, the Tor as innovative ways to, to uh, make our world better, safe. Uh, so. They usually come to us, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the, the beauty of open source projects, right? So, like, people just, like, do whatever, like, um, I don't know, like, Micah did the onion share thing. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, you can just think about any project. And if, like, um, I eventually, I, I was, like, for example, I was a Tor user, and then, like, I had, like, I was working on some, some stuff, and then I became a Tor developer. So it's, like, you can also become, become a Tor developer after having an idea. So it's, it's not really... It's, it, we are trying to be more ex uh, inclusive rather than exclusive. Indeed. Are, are you guys going to be hanging out in a particular area here? Mezzanine? Yeah. Around. Far. Okay. <laughs> They're also you. giving a talk tomorrow about uh, Onion Services. Yeah, you can also find Thank us there. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dick Rocket, and uh, I have a... <laughs> Why are you laughing? Um, I have a question. First of all, thank you for allowing me to be here. Everybody hope. This is my first time here. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Thank you, Three Alarm. And um, Black Lives Matter, how can your project end racism? Well, that's a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, I that's think, offensive. No, yeah, I, I think like uh, one of the greatest thing, um, I, I think Cypherpunks, if you've read Cypherpunks Manifesto. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, like look it up. Um, it's, um, Google it. They're going to know who I am then. Uh, you can look it up and, and like basically we believe that by using encryption we can uh, defend the democracy. Okay, is that worth defending today? Yeah. Let's hear it everybody, come on. First Amendment is what I'm using right now, right? You too? First Amendment, freedom of speech, correct? Sure. I'm dead yeah. serious, but why are the yeah. millennials trying to take all my Pokemons? <laughs> cool, cool. Technolo technology is a tool, it's a tool. Sometimes we're tools. Anyway, 
I, I just I just have two quick points. One, in terms of the kind of all-in-one boxes, I think that a lot of people are trying to play with for a long time. A lot of them, I mean, you're not going to encrypt the internet. You're not going to solve every problem. Um, it took Tor years to deal with DNS lookups. Uh, you know, th there's lots of things that have gone on that are problems that Tor people work on that a lot of these all-in-one boxes are never going to do. And they, to be honest, a lot of them try to do too much. They try to run a public relay and run a hidden service, which you should never do. There's lots of things that go on. So I'd be really, really careful about a lot of these uh, all-in-one wonder boxes out there. On the issue of diversity, um, I think, I mean, I think Georg, whoever brought this up, but it's even worse than just the Five Eyes stuff because if you look at the distribution of diversity in network in terms of countries, it's bad. Actually, there's other things that are a lot worse. Um, I'm actually involved in a project, you guys probably know about the Tor BSD diversity stuff, reporting Tor browser to OpenBSD. And actually, if you look at network diversity, 90% of the Tor network and, and bandwidth, of number of relays and the bandwidth, is our Linux-based systems, which means nine out of 10 of them, at least, are sharing the same random number generator. And a common Linux kernel vulnerability affects 90% of the Tor relays. I mean, that in itself, to me, is a horrific, scary, disturbing thing because there has been system-wide kernel-based vulnerabilities in the, uh, in, the, in the Linux kernel many, 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 many times. Um, so that, to me, is actually a focus that people need to be looking at more and more and more. I'm not just saying go and run an operating system that you're not familiar with as a Tor Relay. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, don't decide tomorrow you're going to start running a Solaris or a Luminos or a FreeBSD or OpenBSD Relay. Bad idea. On the other hand, I think a lot more attention does need to be put at looking at operating system diversity and, um, and whole numbers of other diversity. Because if you're talking about perfect diversity, you're talking about like every, you know, billions of devices out there that are all running different, everyone's running a different operating system, a different IP, a different AS number, and so on and so forth. But we, we can't hit that, but that's what we should be aiming towards. And that means actually breaking up as much as we can the network. It means, you know, more relays in Southern Africa, more relays in Eastern, Eastern Asia and so on and so forth. So, anyway. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, we are, we are mostly uh, Debian people, so if you're like, uh, if you're um, a Unix person, please join our community and we need, yeah, yeah, we need more, more Unix people in general. Uh, hi, uh, in advance, I, I apologize for po a potentially very dumb question because I'm not a tech person, um, but in talking about, uh, to people about Tor and exploring Tor, I've been really scared away. You know, people tell me uh, it's for really great things for anonymity and so on, but yet there's that dark web and, you know, a lot of really bad people on it and, you know, be careful. So is there an issue? Uh, when I was a, um, uh, internet became a thing when I was a teenager um, or, you know, like, I don't know, like 11, 12 years old. And uh, what my parents knew about internet was that it's full of porn and full of bad stuff, and I should never use a computer because they know they don't know what's happening same in there. Uh -huh. That's pretty much the same thing okay. about Tor network. Okay. Uh, it has all sort of thing like it's it's a, you know like it's a, it's a network. It it enables you to have restrict, uh, unrestricted access to the internet to the data. Look at it as a um, as a in a form of a public library. Uh -huh. You walk in a library, you can just pick and grab any kind of books that you want and nobody's gonna ask you a question like, what kind of book do you read? Why do you read that? How often do you read that? I, I don't mean that I'm afraid of information. No, no, yeah. I, I just meant, am I in any way at risk? Do you know what I mean? Um, am I open to, am I, am, I, am I exposing myself to some kind of vulnerability? Frankly speaking, when you use the internet, um, you are at uh -huh. risk. Yep, and, that's uh, true. Yeah. And like basically, by, by using a lot of the apps that you probably have on your phone, and it, yep. most of us have on our phones, uh, we are exposing ourselves to a lot of our oh, vulnerabilities. Of okay. But uh, what Tor does is that it, it basically tries to like uh, remove, like at, at least like remove some of the attack surface, so we can be more secure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, got it. We like our our. Um, I wish uh, Tor browser was as secure as Chrome, but it's not, unfortunately. But we are working, like we are moving toward that. But um, it's the most private browser that you can uh, find. It's uh, like gotcha. you can, uh, you, ha you don't have to be worried about like all the, all the shadow profiling, uh, all the advertisement companies uh, tracking your activities and all the, right. you know. Um, right. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, speaking of Chrome, since you bring it up, 
Now the Chromebooks are getting the Google Play Store support so they can install and use Android apps in a sort of hybrid fashion. Um, so now I guess Orbot will be available for Chromebooks. Can you say anything that you, you know about how uh, secure that would be or what the features are that moving forward? Sure. Can I add, say one thing? And you, uh, so the, the problem with Chrome in general is that I wish that we could have uh, uh, Tor browser based on on Chrome, and I think a lot of people uh, wish, like, share the same wish. But the problem is that you c it's very difficult to remove Google stuff from Chrome. Uh, it's Google is essentially an advertisement company, and uh, whatever they build, it has like I don't know, like ten, like imagine Google Analytics is like ten thousand times worse, and uh, like it's like just having Tor on. I don't think uh, I don't know what other people think, but I don't think having um, Orbit on. Uh, Chromebook would, would uh, help you from uh, would, would save you from from uh, Google. Like it depends like on, on your thread model. I think you can bypass censorship but still, but yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Depends on your thread model is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. So, thanks very much for the uh, uh, from the tour folks. Oh, they left stickers for. For me, I'm going to steal their stickers. Unless somebody else All right. <laughs> um, so uh, just a quick reminder that for those interested in Tor community issues, 